Hey, it's Lester Martin from Starburst Academy. We'll continue on in this video. We've already set up the caching services and to enable uh, table scan redirection and materialized views. And in this video, we'll just uh, verify that both of those are working. So we'll focus on the first one, table scan redirection. Quick reminder, here was that main YAML file we already set up. And uh, I think I'm really going to point you to is line 68 right here. It just says, hey, we got a, a rules file, a cache rules JSON. And I'll come back to that in a moment. Uh, but we'll peek at it real quick while we're here. And it basically says, hey, in general, you know, there's how long if we don't set any values up on a particular table we're trying to create a cache copy of, where we like to store those and how long and such. And the thing that might you might notice is this default catalog and schema are going to be Hive and Cache. So inside of our rules, we're actually going to say, let's make a copy of catalog schema table bootcamp public orders. So we'll go see that in a second. And we're going to actually store that copy under Hive Cache. So let's go look and see what that means in practice. All right, so I'm logged in over here as just kind of a general user. And I'm going to run just a query. This query is pointing to uh, bootcamp up here, this catalog up here. And it's also joining data from TPC H down here at the bottom. So just pretty much ran just a join, nothing too special, a federated join. And in fact, I went to an advanced tab to verify what's happening. And what we uh, are getting told here is, yes, that catalog TPC H, we're actually hitting that customer table. But when we try to hit the bootcamp uh, uh, catalog, we're actually going somewhere else. We're getting, we're picking up a, we're being redirected to a cache copy. So it's Hive, Cache, and then as I moused over, you can see a long name, orders, underscore, you know, big long GUID looking thing. So what that really tells me is that the scan actually, the the, the, the hitting the actual uh, copy on the data lake actually did work as opposed to going on the real table. And this feature is one that we want folks to use and not necessarily be aware of that. That's something we operationally have put in place but we might want to let some users, some power users know that, hey, if you do something like this, I'll run a session property that says for this um, particular uh, catalog, bootcamp, turn off uh, redirection. So this would be universal for the entire catalog. If we had 20 tables cached, you're saying disable them. Now, when I run that same query one more time, it's going to take a little bit longer this time. It's not very big system or anything like that, so it's still pretty fast. And if I navigate over to that advanced tab again, I'll see, yep, there it is. It actually hit, went to bootcamp public orders instead of that hive, I have that, uh, excuse me, that table scan redirected copy. So I'm going to turn that back on because I like it to be on. I'll run the query uh, one more time. I'm just going to double check while we're here. Make sure. Yes, yes, yes. There it is. Hit the cache. And we could actually go see that. We actually have rights. Maybe the average user wouldn't be able to see this, but I wanted to make sure that we could. And if I look under Hive Cache, I might see there, there's that actual table uh, that we hit just a moment ago. So Hive Cache, and we're, again, where was that set? Right here. We said for this table, put it in Hive Cache. And we're actually setting up, you know, you could, there's a variety of properties. We're choosing to say, let's just refresh that once um, every 24 hours. All right, so let's move on over to the um, materialized views um, of validation. So I'm gonna look back into our configuration again, same settings. This is the general cache services that supports both redirection and uh, materialized views, but I'll go back into the Hive setup again, the Hive connector uh, and catalog setup and I want to point out line number, uh, probably right here, 67. This says, hey, where would I like to store um, materialized views, which we're going to focus on next. Remember, materialized views are run a query, but take the results and store those as a table. Store, store those uh, as they sound like materialized copies, sometimes called a storage table. So we want to make sure that Scheme exists just like the other one did. We can just triple uh, verify that right quick. Uh, I'm in, logged in as an administrator here. And if we look under 
uh, under Hive. There it is right there, views, cache. So you might say, wasn't the other one cache and this one's view cache? Yes, and I would encourage you to try to do something like this, not necessarily point them to the same um, schema. I guess arguably it could happen, but there's a good practice right here to spread it out a little bit. Um, what else do we have to look at here? I think back in the, yeah, that's the main one I want to show you there. So I am going to probably need to go run some permissions. Now, I had already set these permissions up, but I think I've, I should run through them and just let you see uh, what you need to do. So I'm an administrator. I'm going to go into roles. And before all this happened, I did create a role called caching service. And in that role, I put the user caching service. Where did that user come from? Well, that user came from the fact that we identified it uh, a little bit earlier, right here in uh, line 65. We said, hey, the caching service user is nicely called caching service, just to keep it easy. But what's more interesting here is the permissions um, that I have to uh, set up. Now, as you look here, you might see I have a lot of permissions, so I'm going to run through the ones you need, uh, and it'll simply just tell us, I think you have that set, uh, Lester, and we'll just go, okay, and we'll keep on going. Uh, there were a few settings that we needed to create uh, for our good friend table scan redirection, and those would be like things like, well, if you remember in the table scan redirection, we were going to um, write to uh, Hive Cache. So we'd have to say, hey, for tables, column Hive, uh, schema Cache, this is where the table scan redirects would live. We said uh, uh, all tables and views that are within there, we want to allow um, everything because it's going to manage that entire folder, uh, that entire schema. Again, privileges already exist. It's just kind of letting us uh, know that. So I confirm on that one. Uh, we need some other privileges, such as, um, let's think here. This one probably we're going to read from the boot camp. This is the table we're going to be able to read from. So the caching service needs to have access to, to select that particular table. We'll just be very specific here this time and drill all the way into orders instead of doing uh, a bit of wild carding. And really all it needs to be able to do is read that thing. So the service account needs to be able to read the table uh, that it wants to cache. All right, I must have forgot something here. Tables, boot camp, public orders, uh, all columns. There we go. And there we go. Save a privilege. Now it's going to tell me again. You already have this. Thank you very much. Um, normally it would just stay there and let you add another. Keeps booting me out because I uh, previously set those up. But I did want to run through them. All right, what else do we need to do? Uh, another privilege that we would need is just some system settings uh, for this cache, uh, this uh, service account. Uh, we need to be able to get a hold of the metadata. And in the metadata, we're looking for all those tables that are in there. And really what we need, what need to do is just be able to select. We need to understand all the metadata. Yep, privilege already exists. Um, simultaneously, or just, just similarly, we need to be able to do uh, one more big one for table scan redirect. And that's going to be over here under this other feature. I think it's two, yeah. Catalog session properties, and then we'll do the same thing for system setting properties. And really, we just want to let it set, um, set these for everything. That's the easiest way to do that here. Uh, set, set, set. Sure. And I could have just left that, details, add, and we need the same thing for um, system settings, system catalog and system settings, uh, all, 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 everybody, all the properties, and uh, save those settings as well. Okay. Um, I'm thinking at that point, that's all the features that we had to do for table scan redirect. That's what we just validated, but we have to give the same service account via the role for its RBAC uh, implementation here, a few more permissions as well. So let's walk through, uh, let's walk through what those would be. So as we add a privilege, we're gonna store our materialized views in a schema called view cache storage. So we pretty much need to say, hey, for everything in there, kind of like the cache folder we did a minute ago, we wanna say, um, that the system user can pretty much control that whole schema. So that's fine. That was there. 
Um, we also want to be able to, um, I guess, uh, select from uh, the place that we're going to store the table, the, the materialized view uh, itself. Now, that could be all over the place, but for me, that was. Uh, I didn't show you that, but I'll show you when we go to the SQL code in a moment here. I'll go ahead and add a privilege for it. We want to say the same thing in Hive. I want to make sure uh, I'm going to store my materialized views. You know, we can store we can store them anywhere we want. I created a whoops. I created a uh, schema just called student zero zero, and from here, uh, we can just say everything in here allow a select. We want to make sure that the system user can can deal with the fact that it needs to read that view that you just created. All right, looks like I might have missed that one. That's okay. Um, and probably we're going to also make a view, as you'll see in a second, on a few other tables. So let me just uh, tell you about those. There is a, uh, under Query Editor, there's a schema called TPCDS. So I'm going to reference uh, some of that information. I already set that up. No need to show you that. It's just where uh, we're going to create the materialized view. So often you can let this materialized views uh, service account. The caching servers actually have quite a bit of access, even at the whole catalog level, if you're going to do a lot of caching uh, from that. Uh, let's think what else we need to put in there. I think I think that is the, pr the brunt of the permissions. Okay, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go over in my uh, user account. That was my sysadmin account. So in my user account, let's talk about materialized views. I went ahead and did this already. I created Hive Student 00. This is the... Um, uh, the, the schema I'll store my materialized views in wherever you create those they can be anywhere um, That's where I chose to do them. And here's a query. I'm gonna run This query is a federated query. Oh, excuse me. Not federated. It's reading all from TC uh, TPC TPC transaction process council um, uh, DS Catalog two different tables just doing a join. There's results took 12 seconds or so um, That's a good thing to remember took some some number of seconds might have been a little shorter than that. There might be some uh, um, metadata caching that would happen next time. But let's create a view around that. So create a view called, of all things, oops, let me just highlight it one more time for us. Create this my view. Called it something simple. We ran it. It actually finished almost immediately, or immediately. And uh, you might say, well, it took 12 seconds to run it before, so let's run it again. And it didn't happen instantaneously. It took a few seconds here, probably three or four, five, six seconds. Last one took about 12, but again, there was some metadata uh, caching that probably helped. Or maybe not much at all. Still 10, 12, 11, 11, 12 seconds. There it is, 12 seconds. So what happened is we actually defined the view, which we can see right over here under student zero, my view. And then, you know, my view has all those columns that are returned, those three columns that are returned from that query. But if I go look at the query details, I'm going to find out it actually still ran the actual query. So what happened is we defined the materialized view, but it hasn't been refreshed. Hmm. We might say, didn't we set up a uh, uh, definition? We did uh, to do something like, hey, let the caching service auto refresh it. We did set that up, but in fact, there's a little bit of a delay in there it waits uh, x amount of time it's a configuration i have mine set pretty low a minute or two and uh so it's actually not hasn't cached it or refreshed it so i'm going to manually kick that refresh off here uh, i may get a small error if it, if the caching service is re recaching it while i'm caching it'll just tell me hey it's already being done but it looks like it's going to run and what's going to happen after that finishes and it should take that that 12 seconds or so that it took to run the query. There we go, 13 seconds. Now if I run my view, that actually should run a whole lot faster. Yep, 0.22 seconds. I'm gonna hit the query details, navigate over to the advanced, and guess what? It's actually reading now, not really running the real query. It's reading the materialized copy, which is in that highs, Hive view, uh, view cast storage, and then uh, my view, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. We can see that. Um, over here as well. So again, here is the actual defined materialized view that folks are querying and then average user, you probably don't want them to see this, but I wanted you to see it. So guess what? There is my view and then a long name. So this is a real table, but it's all happening behind the scenes. Um, if that gets old and doesn't get refreshed, it'll just fall back uh, to a query itself. 
All right, to be honest, that's it. Uh, we quickly validated that the table scan redirects are working and the materialized views are working as well. I appreciate it and hope you learned something today. Thank you.